first of all, thanks for being here. Um, I'm excited to be back. Uh, it's a place where I think we belong. Uh, this year is particularly satisfying because it's been several years since we've been back to the final weekend in college soccer. Um, and I think this is a, one I appreciate more. Uh, it reminds me of 2002, and it's been a few years since we got there. Um, get a little spoiled. Players, fans, got a little spoiled. And I think uh, it was important for us to reset the identity of the Maryland soccer team. The way we ended the last couple of years, there was times it didn't feel uh, that we were playing Maryland soccer. And I challenged the team at the end of last season in the first post team meeting that we need to reset who we are as a program. Um, in order to do that, I also went out and scheduled the hardest schedule in the history of college soccer. Um, we're not going <laughs> to challenges. And, and I told them it was because I believed in them and I believed in their ability uh, to be successful. We had a great trip to Europe, had a great summer, and then we start 0-2 and 2. So now we've got, we have 10 games undefeated, excuse me, 10 games winless from date to last year. And yet we showed our resolve, we showed our strength, we showed our belief, and now we're showing our quality. Um, our team deserves to be in this weekend uh, because we've got a great group of seniors and a great group of young men who accepted the challenge of Maryland soccer. And uh, now we have a great opportunity um, this weekend, uh, and we're playing against uh, Indiana, who on a microcosmic level, we have another chance of redemption. And this has been a story of redemption, um, not only for our program, uh, but for our university. Um, this is a great university. We have great people. We always rise to the challenge. Our team has risen to a challenge and will continue this weekend and our university and our athletic department will meet the challenge. And uh, I'm excited that we get an opportunity to put a smile on people's face this weekend. Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the DC Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Sash, first of all, congratulations. A uh, couple questions. Number one, when you were sitting at four and five and three, I think was the record. What happened from that moment on? All right, that I think you went seven, one, and one throughout the rest of the uh, yeah. schedule, which in the Big Ten is incredible. That's number one. And number two, talk about the fact that Big Ten has three teams in the Final Four. The ACC set nine and have none. Yeah. And uh, is that a statement that the Big Ten is dominant now? Well, I, I guess the first question, <clears throat> when we're four, five, and three, and we're 0-2 oh, and two, all of those things, we knew that uh, as long as we got over 500, we would make the NCAA tournament. Um, so our goal was simply to find a way to survive the schedule and be over 500 and have a chance at the national tournament. Last season when we lost, I didn't think we were uh, tough enough um, because I thought we won games that maybe won on talent, but maybe not um, on, on a collective uh, strength of team. We got through some games and we saw some areas uh, that were weak that we that we really couldn't correct. It's tough to teach uh, young men what's wrong when they're winning. <laughs> and, and I think that really hurt us. So this year, through some of the, the losses and the ties, we're able to really uh, figure out what to strengthen. And we're able to have all the players buy in, uh, uh, et cetera. The chemistry of this team is fantastic right now. They are a team that I don't have to coach. I let them go because they have become, uh, they've taken ownership. Uh, the, the second part of your question, yeah, I'm delighted to have three Big Ten teams in the College Cup. Um, uh, the, uh, the ACC is, is, is a great conference. Um, and when we left the ACC, my number one goal was to help the Big Ten become the best conference in college soccer. 
the first thing I tell my players when they walk in, the very first thing I say to them is, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. It's important for you to leave a legacy here and make it better when you're gone. When we got to the Big Ten, I took it upon myself uh, and the fellow coaches in the Big Ten to help raise uh, the standard in the Big Ten. Uh, they've always had great teams like Indiana and Michigan State and upcoming teams like Michigan and successful teams like Ohio State, Northwestern and Penn State. Um, but it was important for me to help elevate the league. And I think this is a small step in that direction. I'm not taking full credit or the University of Maryland, but it, it really is nice to have three teams in the College Cup from one conference and one that we're in. Chris? Hey, Coach. Uh, good season. Um, my question is, uh, well, it's two questions. First of all, you played Indiana tough both games this yeah. year, 1-1, one, 2-1, one, uh, to one, so you're right there with them on the field. And secondly, you guys entered the season uh, as the number 11 seed, uh, not not the hunted, but the hunter. Is that psychologically a, a good place to be heading into the College Cup uh, Final Four? And uh, what do you have to do to beat Indiana? Yeah, um, you know, it's hard for Maryland to be um, – the hunter, because people are always hunting us. <laughs> but if, if there is, a, uh, you know, we, we have used the idea of being a little bit of an underdog and had a chip on our shoulder, and certainly going into Kentucky, uh, they're the higher seed away from home, big crowd. Uh, we, we approach that same with Duke. Um, and we have a great opportunity against Indiana. Indiana has been the most dominant team in the country all year long. Uh, we have played them very tough both games. Uh, in both games, uh, um, I thought they were very even games. Uh, we think we know them very well right now. We think we match up well with them, uh, but they're a terrific team. You know, they they were within a minute or two of, of going into penalty kicks and national championship game last year. They're highly motivated. They're a senior laden team, and we were a senior laden team. So it's two experienced teams. Um, I think it'll be a classic uh, college soccer matchup. I'm sure the whole country uh, will be watching that game. I'm sure there'll be a uh, watch party over at Bentley's. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, our fans will have a chance to uh, uh, to get out and uh, really cheer on our team. So uh, no, we're excited for the opportunity, um, and uh, um, yeah, can't wait. Sash, um, first three games you're playing teams that you don't play regularly, so you don't know a lot about. So preparation-wise, you know a lot about Indiana. They know a lot about you. How does that kind of change the preparation compared to the first three games? Yeah, you know the first two games we played in in the state of Indiana. Um, the second game, I think the ball felt like a rock. So I think both teams were a little bit of a fraction of themselves in the second game in the, in the Big Ten semifinal. You know, they were missing their two uh, star forwards with the U-20 national team. Uh, and that's a game that Donovan was injured with a concussion and Chase was just coming off injury. So I joked the fact that we wanted to make it even and kept, kept two of our best guys out. <laughs> um, so I think both teams will be at full strength. I think this will be a great game. Um, look, they're, they're really good. Um, all over the all over the park, but they're lethal when when they get into the final third. Uh, they send a lot of bodies forward, so our, our box defending, our, our getting numbers back uh, is going to be critical. Uh, at the same time, I think that uh, they like to play soccer, and the game will open, and we're going to have opportunities um, in, in their box as well. Um, and I think it's going to come down to execution, you know. Um, and right now, you know, we're executing, they're executing, so it's going to be a heck of a game. Sasha, uh, given how some of the games unfolded in that first half of the season, we've seen yeah. nil nil scores and whatnot. Yeah. As good as it looks now, how much was your patience tested with games like that where the offense was not? Yeah, I think uh, it's a great question. I, I think, uh, you know, I have the, uh, uh, the value of experience right now, and I think maybe earlier in my career I may not have been as patient. Uh, but I really liked what I was seeing, even in those games. I, I could sense that uh, the uh, the chemistry was building, the quality was there. Uh, we had to uh, figure out a few key components, uh, key players in the right places with us. We had some newcomers that had to really find their feet, uh, including like William Hurd as an example. Uh, missed the first couple of games of injury, took a little while for him to, to get his feet. Uh, you know, Paul Ben. Um, and then we also uh, moved the Marseille to around a little bit. And, and when we pushed them closer to the goal, further up the field as a true number 10, that really changed our season a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you know, when you uh, are defined as an attacking team 
and you're having a hard time scoring goals, um, it can wear your patience. <laughs> so uh, thankfully, I'm 56 and not uh, 36, and I was able to uh, um, uh, draw on some experience and, and offer some patience uh, uh, throughout that time. Joe. Sash, obviously Indiana's coming off the national championship loss, so they've been on this stage before. Yeah. You have a player in Chase Gasper who's been on this stage before yeah. at UCLA. Yeah. Uh, so how much do you think he'll play a role in just being able to prepare the guys maybe for maybe just not the match itself, but just being able to take in the opportunity to play on the college yeah, all, all the pressure's on Indiana, so so we're going to throw it all on them. You know, uh, they came close to them. You know, we're, we're on house money. We're going to go down there and play free. Now, uh, look. We have a lot of experienced players played in big games, in big moments. Um, uh, we understand how hard it is to get to, to, get to this weekend. Uh, uh, whatever happened last year happened last year. Uh, Indiana, although I have a lot of players back, is a different team. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're only concerned right now about making sure that we are, uh, are continuing how we play, but we also know that we'll have to raise it one notch higher uh, to meet the challenge uh, on Friday. And uh, trust me, we will be ready. Sasha, funny you mentioned being 56 rather than 36 since- and You remember what yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. Um, the, how much, how, is it, do you appreciate this as much in college cut as a number nine or eight, eight yeah. or nine, yeah. um, as opposed to the first one 20 years ago? I, I, I do, I do. I, like I said, I, I appreciate this one maybe in a way I appreciate our second college cup in 2002, which was I think four or five years after the 98 uh, appearance. Because um, you know I get spoiled too, um, and the expectations are so high. Uh, but having gone through a couple of early exits the last two years in the manner that happened to us uh, has really made me appreciate this one a lot more. And it's a reminder that um, it's hard to get to the final weekend, and especially a sport like soccer where you know it's low scoring and you can play great and you can have a great season, and in one split second your season can end. So I take a great deal of pride in the fact that we're going there for the ninth time and we've got a chance to, uh, uh, to compete for uh, another national championship. Um, uh, that This is a, a special year because it's the 50-year anniversary of the first national title for Maryland and the 10-year anniversary of our third national title. Uh, in fact, I think uh, close to uh, 20 of the 2008 team are coming to College Park this weekend uh, to have their own little reunion. And I'm sure they'll be out and about somewhere, uh, uh, you know, cheering on the team. So, uh, no, it's an exciting time. But, you know, we have a great history, um, and hopefully we can add another chapter this weekend. Sash, you got to talk about Seb Sebastian Elney yeah. being Mr. Clutch. Yeah. It's been going on yeah. for the past few years. And also the growth of Paul Bing into a, yeah. a scorer and yeah. a playmaker. Well, you know, Sebastian Ellen, he's, he's our big gamer. Uh, he, he loves big stages and big moments and big games. Um, and obviously he's got two, two goals uh, in the NCAA tournament already, very important goals against NC State and also against Kentucky. Uh, and uh, this weekend's a big stage, so that excites me <laughs> uh, for Sebastian to, to have another great game this weekend. Um, but, you know, he's... Uh, uh, the senior class came within a whisker of being in the College Cup their freshman year. Uh, we lost a heartbreaking penalty kick shootout to uh, Clemson, and those kids remembered that. And I, I could see it in their uh, in their hearts and their eyes uh, and their smiles uh, in Lexington when we advanced. It means a lot to them. But I also know that group didn't come to Maryland just to get to a College Cup. Uh, they came here to win one, and it's a highly motivated group. And uh, I think it's going to you know, uh, play for an exciting weekend. Um, Paul Ben is a, obviously is a great story for those of you who have uh, followed his track. Um, uh, it, it's, an, it's an incredible story of uh, patience and perseverance and belief and, and, uh, and love of his teammates and, and, and a program that, uh, that believed in him. And, you know, he had a fantastic uh, uh, outing in England last, and you could see it happening. And uh, he opened up to the whole team and, um, it's just a matter of time this year before he really uh, got his uh, confidence in the right place. Uh, but he plays Maryland soccer. He, he loves to press, he loves to attack, uh, plays with a great deal of pride, and he, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's been a pivotal player for us this year. I couldn't be more proud of his story.